Hello and welcome to another cage demo from FIPCages.com. Today we're taking a look at my new uh, multi-panel autopilot gauge. Uh, it's a replica of the Cytec multi-panel minus the pitch trim and flaps. So let's take you through the various different functions. It pretty much emulates everything that the multi-panel can do, but in a FIP. So the S1 key is the mini menu on this gauge. The blue LED indicates the nearest hardware control for the menu, and that's the S1 button. So when we press the S1, the menu comes on, and we press S1 again, the menu goes out. My menus are normally controlled by the uh, the dials, but on this particular gauge, the, the dials are used for the gauge dials themselves. The S2 key is used to toggle the auto throttle on and off. The S3 key is used to change the step value for the IAS. So we can go up in steps of 10. Uh, if we click here, that changes the step value. So plus or minus one, plus minus five, plus minus 10. And then when we increase the value, it goes up relevant to the step value. Okay, S4 turns the autopilot on and off. That's the autopilot master. Um, S5 toggles the currently highlighted uh, button. So in this case, it's uh, altitude is highlighted. If you press S5, that toggles that function on and off. And the S6 changes the button. So you want to turn on nav, um, turn on approach, and you simply select the button you want and then turn it on with the S5. Okay, so the dials are basically used to uh, operate the, the dials of the gauge itself. So the left dial does the function selector and the right dial does the value changer. So we can use the left dial to change the function for altitude, vertical speed, IAS, heading, and CRS. And the right dial enables us to increase the CRS and decrease the CRS and we can go to heading and the right dial will change that value. Um, we can go to IAS um, once again the right dial changes the value for the IAS etc etc. Um, on the vertical speed once again we can select the uh, and change the vertical speed and we can also do the altitude as well. Okay, so now there's two modes of operation on this gauge. The, um, the buttons either operate SIM connect functions or they can send simulation events. Now the simulation events are the standard legacy type commands that are sent to the flight simulator. Whereas um, the SIM connect commands are the ones that work slightly differently. They're the SIM connect data definitions. Now the difference between them is that the autopilot can actually function slightly differently. Um, and you will find that if the SIM connect is enabled, as it is at the moment, when you turn, for instance, the autopilot on and off, it will set it to the current altitude. So it will turn the altitude and we'll turn that off and back on again. And you can see that my altitude has been set to my current altitude. And now I can adjust the altitude. I can take the altitude up but if I turn the altitude off and back on again, once again, it puts me back at my current altitude, ready for me then to select the new altitude. Now, personally, I prefer it where it doesn't change it, um, which is why I built in the optional function where you can turn off the SIM connect and run it off simulation uh, events, and that doesn't do that. So to, to activate that, we simply go into the menu. Um, and the first option within the menu is the version and information which when you enable, it can show you the version number and it gives you some information about the other menu options. Um, and here's the SIM Connect uh, option. So if you change this, you can switch between SIM Events or SIM Connect. So if we set it to SIM Events and turn the menu off, now you can see when I turn off the, auto, uh, the autopilot for altitude and turn it back on again, it's not resetting my altitude back to my current altitude. So let's increase the altitude now. And I'll turn off and back on, and it stayed the same. Go back and put on the SIM Connect, 
and when I turn off and back on you can see that it once again it sets the altitude so different different functions different ways of working the autopilot it really depends on you know your preference on on how you prefer the autopilot to work but you do have the option to switch between sim connect and sim events as well okay so in the menu we also have um, the guide I released now I've put lines and text and various different icons to help you indicate what each of the buttons do and um, once you get used to the gauge and become more familiar with it you can turn these guides off and um, basically it just cleans up the the, uh, the gauge a little bit so you don't have uh, too much clutter but it does require you to remember what each button and dial does so we turn off the menu and you can see it's a little bit cleaner not so cluttered and it functions in exactly the same way s4 autopilot s5 for your toggles and s6 um, we'll put the guides back on for now and the next option is the glass reflection it's currently turned off uh, personally I prefer it on and you can turn the panel reflections on and off now once again like all my other panels and gauges if you turn it off on one all the gauges turn off their glass reflections so they're perfectly in sync as well okay um, you've also got a little indicator down here whether the sim connect is enabled or whether you're running on simulation um, events so if the green lights lit you're running sim connect and as I say be prepared for it to um, set things like your heading and your um, altitude to uh, to your current headings when you activate and deactivate your autopilots and so if you don't want that to do that then switch over to sim events okay well that pretty much covers this gauge i uh, hope you found it useful and i hope you like the new panel uh, please check out my other videos and if you haven't subscribed please do so bye for now